Hello, and welcome back to Podfinder. My name is Philip, and I'm here to talk about Pathfinder 2nd Edition. This is part of a series I am producing, covering the various deities in the Pathfinder role-playing game and its setting, the world of Galarian. Last time, I covered Erastil, god of family, hunting, and agriculture. This time, I am covering another deity with strong connections to the natural world, Gozra, the god and goddess of nature, storms, and the sea. Gozra is as old as nature, said to have come into being when the first mortals set sail, and when they cowered in fear of the first storm. Gozra is often called the wind and the waves, and this name refers to his and her dual aspects. Gozra, unlike most of the other deities, is simultaneously male and female. His male aspect has domain over the sky and storms, while her female aspect has domain over the sea. Collectively, both aspects hold domain over nature more generally, as well as animals. As an aside, I will be referring to Gozra with both masculine and feminine pronouns throughout this video. And to clarify, Gozra specifically does not use they-them pronouns. That said, for players or GMs who might find a they-them variant of Gozra to be more relatable or compelling, I think it is an entirely reasonable change to the lore. Gozra's male aspect is commonly worshipped by cloud giants as Yozom, the Sky Father. Likewise, storm giants often revere his male aspect as the father sky god Hayarth, and her female aspect as the mother sea goddess Torithia. The people of Vudra often revere only her female aspect, calling her she who guides the wind and the waves. The Bonawut tribes of the Mwangi Expanse revere a deity known as Shimye Magala, which is a combination of Gozra and Desna. Outside of her dedicated clergy, she is primarily worshipped by druids, sailors, hermits, and those who live off the land. Gozra is typically depicted in two ways. His male aspect appears as a grandfatherly human male with a long, full beard. His form is made entirely from clouds, wispy and white when he is in a good mood, and dark and thunderous when he is angered. Her female aspect appears as a beautiful human woman with long, flowing hair. Her form is made entirely from water, except for her hair, which sometimes appears to be made from seaweed. When she is angered, the water swirls and boils. When she is at peace, the water is calm and clear. Both aspects are typically depicted as being of Gurundi or Mwangi descent. Artistic representations of the wind and the waves typically portray both aspects simultaneously, with both sides generally reaching out to clasp hands, or locked in some form of combat. Unlike the vast majority of gods, Gozra makes his home on the material plane. She travels the oceans and waterways of Galarian, taking the form of waves and ripples. He soars through the skies as endless windstorms. Gozra has a strong connection to the first world, but keeps some distance between himself and that plane, like most other deities. Devout followers of Gozra, called Gozrans, live lives deeply connected to the natural world. This connection takes many forms, from serving as diviners and advisors on nature for communities, to sending plagues of locusts and carrion toward towns and cities as an act of vengeance for the natural ecosystems those communities have destroyed. Gozra's dual nature leads to a decentralized and highly regional church, with individual sects approaching their faith differently. Broadly speaking, the Church of Gozra values believers who live off the land, who cultivate skills working with plants or animals, and who listen for and correctly interpret signs and portents. Temples and churches to Gozra are, unsurprisingly, places with connections to both water and the sky. Nearly all are open air, at least in part, and they almost universally contain a prominent pool or similar water feature. Many temples, especially those in remote regions, are made from unworked local materials, from driftwood and seaweed on the shoreline to fallen branches or shaped living trees in deep forests. 
In communities which rely strongly on the wind or water, a temple might be constructed of more conventional building materials and incorporate a windmill or water wheel. These structures serve a practical purpose in the community, but emphasize the importance of respecting the natural world, even as you harness it and put it to use. Shrines are generally simple, often consisting of a single striking feature in an otherwise secluded place. One shrine might be a wide, flat stone placed at the top of a mountain where a follower can sit and bask in the strong winds. Another might be a rock formation on the shoreline with the bone of an enormous sea beast raised up toward the sky. In parts of Avistan, rings of standing stones are also common, and these generally date back multiple millennia. Many of these structures serve as precise calendars tracking the sun through the sky. The hymns to the wind and the waves serve as Gozra's holy text. It is a collection of prayers, hymns, and rules for living in peace with nature. These rules are typically personal in nature, focusing on the actions an individual follower can take in their daily life. Individual temples often pare down their copies of the text, leaving only the relevant sections for the local ecosystems. Since the worship of Gozra often involves large amounts of water and fresh air, the holy text is rarely written on paper. Instead, priests generally carve it into pieces of wood, placing it on display for the faithful to read. Gozra is worshipped extensively throughout the inner sea, but most commonly in areas where civilization is in direct contact with nature on a large scale. Humans make for the most prevalent followers, and specifically humans of Mwangi or Varisian descent. Gnomes are also common followers of the wind and the waves, though any ancestry which comes in frequent contact with the natural world might find the deity appealing. The faith of Gozra is also particularly prominent in the shackles in Sargava, now Vidrian, and in Thuvia. Gozra is an ancient deity said to have first appeared when the first breeze blew across the surface of the first ocean. Humans have worshipped the wind and the waves since the dawn of time, since before civilization. Gozra is recognized as one of the deities who stood against Rovagug, joining Serenre and numerous others in battling the rough beast and driving him toward the cage. In the earliest days of ancient Aslant, Gozra was widely worshipped. Innumerable sailors trusted in Gozra to guide them home, offering prayers and sacrifices to the goddess of the waves. Likewise, his connection to the weather made Gozra a major deity in the Aslanti pantheon until the empire's end, even as they began to favor deities of cultivation like Jaidi over more traditional nature deities. Gozra is largely aloof to the concerns of other deities. She rarely, if ever, concerns herself with the affairs of the outer spheres, preferring to remain on the material plane and experience the music of the natural world. Still, he has a few notable allies, and at least as many avowed enemies. Gozra is on good terms with Erastil, the god of the hunt. The two deities share a great deal in common, both holding domains over the natural world and demanding that their followers live in harmony with nature. Gozra has it in his head that he has dominion over the sky, the sea, and all beasts that live therein, along with all wild plants. Meanwhile, she believes that Erastil has dominion over cultivated crops and the beasts that walk the earth. The two deities acknowledge one another as friends, and their churches get along well. Gozra also has a good relationship with Desna, the goddess of the night sky. Sailors use Desna's stars to navigate Gozra's waters, and Desna's free-spirited curiosity holds much in common with Gozra's fascination with the natural world. It is little wonder that the seafaring Bonawut peoples of the Mwangi Expanse worship the two deities as the combined Shimye Magala, and neither divinity seems to mind this. Their relationship can be tricky, however, as Gozra will often find himself jealous of the prayers offered by travelers to Desna. Gozra is also notably friendly with the Eldest, the deities of the First World. Additionally, the Green Faith, the nature-centered religion spread across all of Galarian, is closely related to the Church of Gozra. While no single deity represents the Green Faith, the myriad nature spirits which provide power to the Faith's practitioners 
almost universally recognize Gozra as an ally. Gozra often comes into conflict with particularly destructive and corrupting deities. The chief among these is Rovagug, whose wanton destruction threatens the natural balance of life. Likewise, Nethus's destructive aspect often presents a threat to anything and everything, the natural world included. And, of course, Ergothoa is despised for her spread of corruption, disease, and reckless consumption. On a side note, seriously, how is Ergothoa still alive-ish? She's up to four major deities who specifically dislike her. Back on topic, Gozra also has a very tense relationship with Abadar. The god of civilization encourages the spread of structured society, and his followers often encroach into the wilderness, upsetting the natural order. Gozra, understandably, takes issue with this. For his part, Abadar takes it very personally when one of his beloved cities suffers from an extreme weather event. While the two deities are not formally enemies, their relationship is adversarial at best. This strained relationship extends to other civilization-related deities as well, like Jaidi, the Aslanti goddess of agriculture. For players who might be interested in characters who follow Gozra, here are a few useful details. For those using the alignment rules, Gozra is a true neutral deity, but he will accept clerics of any neutral alignment. Her edicts are to cherish, protect, and respect nature in all its forms. Conversely, to bring civilization to intrude on the wild, to create undead, or to despoil areas of natural beauty are all anathema to Gozra. His holy symbol is a drop of water hanging from a leaf. It is stylized in various ways around Golarion, with the orientation and type of leaf changing across regions. Her domains are air, nature, travel, and water, and she has the alternate domains of cold and lightning. Gozra's sacred colors are blue and green, representing the blue skies and seas which he loves so much, but also the verdant plant life that fills the natural world with beauty. Worshippers will generally incorporate both colors into their clothing, as well as feathers, shells, furs, leathers, teeth, and other materials harvested from animals. These are always harvested sustainably, with nothing going to waste. Other natural materials, ranging from sticks to driftwood to pearls to flowers to coral, are used to make holy symbols. In communities near the sea, one garment will often be made from kimle, a sea plant cultivated by the Church of Gozra. Priests will typically maintain long, flowing beards, generally unwoven and free-flowing. Likewise, priestesses will grow their hair very long, often weaving in seaweed and other natural decorations. Gozra does not forbid his followers from wearing armor, though most armor will be made from naturally occurring materials, including leathers, hides, bone, and dark wood. Gozra's favored weapon is the trident. The wind and the waves has no requirement for her priests or priestesses to be battle-trained, so no large-scale military orders or training regimens within the church are known to exist. That's not to say that Gozrans are untrained in matters of war, only that standardized formal training is not part of the faith. Most followers will wield whatever weapon makes them the most comfortable. For some, this will be the trident. Others might gravitate towards bows or spears, or other weapons which can also serve as survival tools. Being a nature deity, Gozra has no specific favorite animal. Any animal of the natural world is loved equally by the wind and the waves. That being said, some sects of Gozra's church specifically revere seagulls, flying fish, and frogs. While not technically player options for familiars or companions, tidehawks, a type of water-based phoenix, are also said to be particularly loved by Gozra. Realistically, characters who worship Gozra could reasonably choose nearly any animal as a companion or familiar. Most of Gozra's formal clergy are either druids or clerics. Druids will likely be members of the animal, leaf, storm, wave, or wild orders. Rangers and barbarians might also take naturally to the Church of Gozra, particularly those focused on the nature skill. 
Other classes well suited to the worship of Gozra might include nature-themed casters, like sorcerers or witches with bloodlines or patrons which grant them access to the primal spell list. Primal summoners will also fit in nicely. Other classes might make for excellent worshippers of Gozra if they put focus on the nature skill, or possibly on survival. The Elementalist or Geomancer class archetypes might be excellent options for spellcasters, especially as expanded in Archetypes Plus on Pathfinder Infinite. Additionally, the Beastmaster, Familiar Master, or Horizon Walker archetypes might be appropriate for any character who follows the wind and the waves. Humans and gnomes are the most prevalent followers of Gozra. Followers of Gozra are most common on the outskirts of human society or in the wilderness. Human followers are commonly found among the Mwangi and Varisian peoples, and Gozra is strongly associated with the Mwangi expanse. Other ancestries can easily become followers of Gozra, especially characters who are hunters, sailors, or wilderness explorers. Other ancestries with close ties to nature, such as Leshies or possibly Gorons, might take well to the Church of Gozra as well. Planar scions with connections to wind and water, like Sylphs and Undyne, might also be drawn to the Church of the Wind and the Waves. Devout followers of Gozra will live lives devoted to the natural world. This devotion takes many forms. Some followers might seek to defend nature from the encroachment of civilization. Others might seek to emulate the ferocious power of storms or wild beasts and channel that strength toward their own ends. Others still might attempt to teach humanoid communities to live in harmony with nature, teaching sustainable harvesting and hunting practices to remote towns and villages. Some followers of Gozra will live as hermits, withdrawing from society and finding a place for themselves in the wild. Others will deliberately insert themselves into humanoid communities, determined to bring the teachings of Gozra to the world. Followers of Gozra can take well to an adventuring lifestyle, provided their quests come into contact with the natural world. They are well suited to exploration-style campaigns, particularly in forest or ocean settings. They also fit well in campaigns where a connection to nature plays an important role in the story. They will struggle in more urban campaigns or traditional dungeon crawls, since these types of stories will offer fewer ways for the character's faith to interact with the main story. Gozerans will likely be motivated by a drive to preserve, explore, study, and protect the natural world. For those players looking for more character inspiration or to homebrew some custom magic items for a follower of Gozra, check out his first edition page on Archives of Nethys. For GMs looking to integrate Gozra and her followers into a campaign, here are some ideas. Gozra's current herald is the personification of fury, a living elemental storm of both air and water. His divine servitors are the Zokothians, feathered serpents with a blunt disposition and a love of exploring. When she elects to show favor to her followers, they might find themselves caught up in a gentle breeze, beset by the scent of flowers, or listening to the unexpected sound of ocean waves. His displeasure is marked by the sudden appearance of localized storms, or by flocks of birds and wild creatures in foul moods. The Church of Gosra is generally decentralized, and different sects of believers might very easily find themselves on opposing sides of a conflict. Characters who worship Gozra might be willing to defend a frontier town which is living in harmony with nature. Another group of Gozrans might very easily find themselves driven to destroy that same town to allow nature to reclaim the area. These two groups then bring a theological debate to an otherwise simple defend-the-town-from-invaders type adventure. Another interesting way to incorporate the Church of Gozra into a campaign might be to take advantage of their unique communication system. Churches of Gozra, located near the ocean, often carve passages of the hymns to the wind and the waves, as well as other messages, into pieces of driftwood, then throw them back into the sea, trusting their god to carry the messages where they need to go. PCs might be recruited by the church to track down the source of some strange messages which have recently drifted in on the tides. 
Perhaps a mad priest of Gozra has been having strange visions and is trying to warn of some coming calamity, but is unable to reach the outside world through other means. Alternatively, maybe some corrupting force has taken over a Gozran church, and these messages are the only calls for help which have gotten out. For my last idea, I want to think insanely high level and get a little crazy. Gozra is a powerful nature deity known for his volatility and unpredictability. She often lashes out with tremendous power on the scale of hurricanes, tsunamis, and cataclysmic weather. I think a GM might want to draw some campaign inspiration from another famous Avenger and defender of the natural world, Godzilla. Maybe Gozra will channel his might to summon one or more kaiju to assault a metropolis known for its pollution. I'm picturing one or more of the kaiju, originally statted in 1st edition, attacking Quantium, the magic-polluting capital of Nex, the ultimate incarnation of nature versus civilization. Alright, so this is where I normally wrap things up and announce the subject of the next video, but I do have a fun piece of meta-trivia from the Paizo developers. Apparently, Gozra's name was chosen by Wesley Schneider, who inverted the surname of famous German actor and filmmaker Werner Herzog. So, if you were wondering what Gozra's male voice sounds like, it's probably something like this. So, have fun with that. So, that's it. That's Gozra, the god of storms, the sea, and nature. He is a calm, observant god devoted to watching the natural world. And at the same time, she is a volatile goddess who zealously guards her domain. Next time, I'll be taking a hard left turn into the dark and twisted. Up next is everyone's favorite goth dom, Xan Kuthan, the god of torture, loss, pain, and darkness. If you enjoyed this video, consider checking out my rule supplement Expanded Ancestries on Pathfinder Infinite. It adds over 200 new ancestry feats to the game spread among each of the ancestries not covered by the Pathfinder 2E remaster. And be sure to like and subscribe to see more videos like this.